Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a while since I've done one of these, and with the year quickly coming to a close, I figured now is as good a time as any to predict more future servants. So, here is a list of the potential servants I would personally like to see added to the game in the future. This should go without saying, but I won't be repeating ones from the other two videos, hopefully. So if it feels like I'm missing someone that I've mentioned in the past, go check those out first. So for the Sabres, a lot of people mentioned that they believe that we were going to get Simon Bolivar in the future, and I think that they may be onto something. First off, if it's pronounced Simon, I apologize that is my whiteness making me say Simon. Bolivar's claim to fame is that he freed the Spanish colonies of Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, and Bolivia. Bolivar had been well educated and came from a wealthy family and as such received a European education. He very much liked the French idea of killing your master, and when he returned to Venezuela, he used the French invasion of Spain a la Napoleon as a great diversion to launch his own freedom rally. He and his army crossed the Andes Mountains in horrid conditions and launched a surprise attack on the vice royals of Colombia, eradicating them and freeing the colony. Then he returned to Venezuela again and freed them as well. Then Panama declared its own independence inspired by Bolivar's conquering. He would then continue on to free Ecuador with a little resistance. This trend continued through Peru and by the time he reached Bolivia, he more or less just had to clean up the mess because another person had risen up to set them free. By 1825, all of these colonies had gained their independence. I am super skimming over this, I'm going to be doing that with all of these servants, but we've got a lot of them to cover, so please bear with me with that. Long and the short of it is that Bolivar is essentially the guiding spirit of freedom in South America, and because of his incredible accomplishments, he may actually be eligible to be a Grand Saber. This is a person that I have a certain level of confidence appearing. Pray that they don't gender bend him because I can't think of a world where they can possibly justify that outside of like servant verse nonsense. For the archers, I believe we may see a man named Tipu Sultan, or Sultan Fatah Ali Sahab Tipu. If you have never heard of him, he was a fairly important figure in the same league as Lakshmi Bai. He and Napoleon were possible comrades in arms, or at the very least shared the same goal of hating England. He is also the uncle to Captain Nemo. He's actually very similar to Bolivar in a lot of ways. He received a prince's education in Europe and was educated on military affairs from a young age by the French, and was a commander at the age of 16. Now, this was not just a slap a badge on the rich kid commander, but an actual military strategist. He participated in the first angle England Mysore War, it was a key figure in the second one, decisively defeating the British and becoming the ruler of Mysore. Pretty much from the moment he had a crown upon his head, he began working on a way to keep the British from returning because he knew better than to simply rest on his laurels from one successful takeover. One of the ways that he ensured this was by having the most state-of-the-art weaponry for the time. His own personal gun was the peak of firearms for the time period and location, hence the archer classification. He then had to worry about the encroaching Maratha Empire that also vied for control over India. He would go on to fight two more Anglo Mysore Wars, and would meet his death during the fourth due to a betrayal of his minister selling him and his troops out to the British. He is remembered today for being a stalwart beacon of resistance against imperialism. There's a lot that you can do with this legend and possibly making him a support archer could work. For Lancers, we have a heavy hitter if ever there was one, Izanami. Izanami was one of the two primordial creation gods of Japan. She, with her husband Izanagi, took a spear and stirred up the primordial ocean. From it, they formed land from the sea. They then created six more islands and eventually began to have children. Izanami gave birth to several deities of the Japanese pantheon, but upon giving birth to the fire deity, which one is debated, Izanami died. Izanagi was so enraged that he killed the baby, who then shattered into several different deities. Missing his wife, Izanagi went to Yomi, the land of the dead, to find her. He did, but she informed him that he was too late, for she had eaten the food of the dead and thus could not leave. He wanted to take her back anyway, and they began the return journey. However, not once had Izanagi actually seen his wife while he was in the underworld, for it was far too dark. So, while she slept, he lit his comb on fire to see his wife's face, and found that her body was decomposing and filled with maggots and other horrible things. He let out a scream and ran away, and Izanami chased after him. He managed to escape the underworld and put an unmovable boulder over the entrance that none could ever escape. She then cursed that she would take 1,000 lives a day, to which Izanagi said that he would create 1,500 lives every day. So, Izanami is a tragic figure of Japanese myth, and she actually has precedent for possibly being in the game at least as a pseudo-servant. This is maybe the most obvious spoiler ever, but people get mad if I don't say stuff like this, so quick spoiler, Izanami is the mother of Eris, and Eris actually is a lancer because she has the spear that Izanami and Izanagi used. So it is possible that they will recycle this weapon asset, kind of like how they do with all of Raiko's retainer's weapons that appear in her NP. Izanami would obviously have the instant death gimmick because her daughter does, and would likely be an arts servant. I could see her honestly being a weird arts instant death supporter, like one that actually makes it not a meme for farming content. Also, she currently is the only servant that we know who's ever given birth to a human child, and I'm sure there's a lot of servants in Caldea that really want that secret, so I would very much like to see her put into the game. Now for the one that I somehow have the most and least amount of confidence in, Perry Fawcett for Caster. Now, my suspicions on what is to come on JP have more or less been confirmed. I've been saying that we are going to wind up in El Dorado again, almost as a meme, but now that's been confirmed that we're going to a city of gold, and also the underworld thanks to the new trailer that's appeared, I'm feeling much more confident in that decision. As such, Percy Fawcett 
makes a lot of sense to show up. Fawcett went missing in the Amazon in pursuit of the lost city of Zed. Fawcett was a friend of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, or as fate wants you to call him, Watson, meaning that he is a direct tie to another member of the Caldea staff in Sherlock. Here is what Fawcett is known for. He cited a 62 foot long anaconda, which he was ridiculed for, he charted a huge amount of the Amazon, and he discovered Manuscript 512, a slave driver's document from the mid 1700s, claiming that they had found a lost city, and he himself had deduced that an ancient civilization had been in the Amazon before them. Then at the age of 50, he would return to England as an artillery man for the First World War. After the war, he would return to Brazil and do a solo venture and try to find his lost city, but got a fever and went a little mad and had to leave. He would return once more with his son and his son's best friend to attempt to find the city again. This time, however, he left the instructions that should he not return that no rescue expeditions should be sent lest they meet the same fate as him. They then set out into the jungle and never returned. It is assumed by many that the local tribes got to them, as some were hostile to outsiders. Despite claims from local tribes that they had murdered the group after they were exceptionally rude, no evidence has been found to corroborate that, and no evidence has turned up outside of their final known camp. He has a huge amount of potential for being a future servant in the Lost Belt, if not as a caster, then as a foreigner. They can 100% play on the angle that he went insane in the jungle, and if he doesn't make it in as a servant, mark my words he'll get mentioned. It lines up just too perfectly. For Assassins, one I see coming about as a weird debuff support is the Pied Piper of Hamelin. For the unaware, because I was also unaware, the Pied Piper was a real person. Or at least he's believed to be a real person. His story is known pretty well to most people in America and Europe, but I'll tell it anyway. The town of Hamelin was suffering from a horrible rat infestation and was in a desperate need to get rid of it. One day, a piper dressed in pied clothing, which is this pattern right here, appeared in the town and offered to take care of the rats for an agreed upon price. The price ranges from testimony to testimony, though usually it's about 1,000 guilders. This was a lot of money, but because the village was so desperate, they agreed to this condition. The piper then marched through the streets playing his tune, and the rats of the village became bewitched and followed after him. Once he had rounded up all the rats, he went to the village river, and the rats all jumped in and drowned. Despite his success, the town mayor refused to pay him the full price for his service, or in some versions, didn't pay him at all, and accused him of being a witch. The Piper left town in a fit and vowed to get his revenge. He returned on the 26th of June, dressed in a hunter's green suit, and played his pipes once again. This time, all the children of the town followed after him, while the adults were busy at church. He then led them into a cave, and they were never heard from again. The only witnesses to this event were three surviving children. A deaf one who couldn't hear the music, a cripple who couldn't fall off fast enough, and a blind one who got lost. They would be the ones who inform the adults of the tragedy. Even today, Bagnosentras, the last street the children were seen, is forbidden to have music played there. Depending on your version or source, some say that the piper had all the kids drowned in the river, while others say that the kids were simply spirited away and made to settle on a land far away from home. This is what some believe is Transylvania. Other versions still say that he hid the children away and forced the townspeople to pay an exorbitant amount of money to get them back before returning them. The truth, however, is lost to history. With the fame of the Piper, it's almost a bit surprising that we haven't even seen him mentioned yet. Like, this seems like the kind of story that Nursery Ryan conjures up for an event. Like I said though, I can see their kid being a lot of debuffs and stuns, so long lasting charms, sleeps, and party debuffs to really lean into the bard aspect. An interesting idea for an NP for this character would be to vanish an enemy. Essentially, just take them completely out of the fight for one or two turns. This one, I guarantee you, is going to be a gender bend and a Shotokan and is going to hang out with Crane and Musashi. For riders, as you know, I'm a sucker for the nautical and I plan to keep up with that theme. Simon Haightley is a name that you probably have never heard before, and you are not to blame for that. He is more famous for the story that he inspired, The Rime of the Ancient Mariner. If you've never heard of this story, then you've at the very least heard one of the lines from it, though quoted wrongly. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Let's start with Haley. Haley was a sailor who had been inspired by the tales of maritime adventure that were incredibly popular in the late 1600s. Thus, he became a privateer, which were essentially government-sanctioned pirates that could attack non-native ships. He sailed with Captain Woods Rogers during the War of the Spanish Succession. His first voyage was initially successful, but while Rogers managed to circumvent the globe in return, Haley's crew became ill and a lack of water failed to inspire his crew to go much further, so he had to turn around. He would then get ambushed and captured by the Spanish Inquisition and was tortured before ultimately being sent back to Britain. Despite Despite this, Haley joined a second expedition and was equally disliked and burdensome. After landing in Brazil, he supposedly was awful to the women there, and after days of seeing no life at all at the water, save for one black albatross, he took out his crossbow and shot it dead, claiming that they would have good wind now that it was no longer cursing them. 
He was very much disliked by the crew, and he kind of just vanishes from history after that. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner tells the tale of an old man who encounters a young man going to a wedding and tells the young man this story. The old man was a part of a crew of sailors off of the Antarctic and is disgusted by the slimy things in the ocean. The ship is slowly moving and an albatross is always nearby, so the Mariner shoots it dead. Initially, the crew agrees that this was a good idea, but then the wind stops blowing and the ship no longer moves. The sailors curse the Mariner and force him to wear the albatross around his neck. This does nothing to stop fate, and a gambling match between death and life in death begins with death claiming the souls of all the sailors, and life and death claiming the soul of the Mariner. Thus, all but the sailor dies and he is now cursed to wander in life and death, but he sees the beauty of the world and the albatross eventually falls from his neck. He makes his way to land after a shipwreck and now tells the story to any who will listen. There's a lot to dissect here, and I highly recommend that you go read it yourself, but the Mariner is essentially an immortal who tries to save others by begging them not to follow in his footsteps. It's a beautiful little piece, and we need more pirates, or privateers I suppose. A proper ghost ship can make for one hell of a noble phantasm. Finally, for the Berserkers, I want Baldwin IV of Jerusalem. Admittedly, he would be a better ruler, but the glass cannon nature of the Berserker class will make a lot more sense with him shortly. Baldwin was a leper, and is often referred to as the Leper King. Leprosy is one of those diseases that everyone is aware of and knows, but really don't understand how bad. As such, by the end of his life, Baldwin was unable to use his hands or feet and was blind. Despite this, he is still revered for successfully repelling invaders of his realm, and it is believed that he would have been successful in his invasion and attempt of Egypt had his advisors not second-guessed him. This failed invasion left Jerusalem open to an invasion from Saladin, and Baldwin himself rode to meet the Sultan, despite also having malaria at the time. They met at Ascalon, and when Baldwin saw that they were outnumbered, retreated into the city, which prompted Saladin to attack it. However, Baldwin had accounted for this, and had the Templars stationed in Gaza come join him for his fight, giving him a major advantage. This routed Saladin's forces, and Saladin himself barely escaped alive. Unable to afford using his men to pursue, Baldwin instead fortified Damascus and gained an ally in the Franks. After further conflict, the two would reach a truce. This will last until 1181 when hostilities resumed thanks to a stubborn officer who stopped the caravan. Baldwin would then essentially destroy Saladin's forces readily and resume his rule. Much like the others, there's a lot more to get into and not enough time. I choose the Berserker class for him as it is a representation of his continued disability. That despite being fragile, he himself was incredibly strong of mind and spirit. He could easily work similar to Nightingale in being a support Berserker, which is difficult and niche, but not impossible to pull off. Ironically, he should have guts for surviving so long, even after taking some major damages like falling off of his horse. This guy's pretty much my new Don Quixote, and I rally behind the banner to see him in fate any day. Also for the interested, despite the fact that Baldwin is often depicted wearing a mask, there are no accounts of this in real life, and he likely faced down men with the face of leprosy. That said, he would definitely have a mask at least for his first and maybe second ascension, let's be real on that one. Or they'll play into the angle that he wears a mask and make him a female. But that is why I see coming in the future. As always, if I get even one of these right, I consider it an absolute win. Leave your suggestions for future servants in the comments below, and I may feature them in a video like this in the future. For now though, do all the YouTube stuff, check out my links for my Discord, Twitch, and Twitter. For now guys, keep your chin up. Peace.